living and dead who did these things, we dedicate this program... The Dam Busters. Presented by the author himself, Paul Brickhill, dramatized by Morris West, an Australasian radio production. This is Paul Brickhill speaking. Cheshire was a man of erratic brilliance. Some of his ideas were most peculiar, but those that were good were magnificent. His idea of using mosquitoes to mark for his bombers was one of the magnificent ones. His senior officers carefully watched his methods through a series of important raids and then agreed that he had completely proved his theory. Because of this, 617 Squadron was to, was to lead a huge formation in a raid on Munich. A strong personal bond had developed between Cheshire and his AOC. Consequently, it was more as a trusted friend than a junior officer that Cochrane invited him to discuss the plans for the raid. Well, that's the end of the experiment, Cheshire. You've satisfied me and you've satisfied Harris. Now, the next one is... Munich? Yes, that's right. Munich. We'll uh, need more mosquitoes for that. Yes, I know that. I'm getting you four new ones. That makes six altogether. Well, that's good news, sir. Who's going to fly them for you? Well, I'll put the old legs onto them. Shannon, McCarthy, that bunch. We'll be ready for you in a week. Good. Now, your target in Munich will be the rail yards. It's a big transport marshalling point for the whole of southeastern Germany. Well, that's quite a target. Is uh, 617 going to do the job alone? No, it's too big and too complicated for that. I'm going to put the whole of number five group onto it. 617 will lead and mark. Holy Patrick! We'll have every fighter group in Germany on our tails. Yes, I've, I've thought of that one too. Now, look, uh, this is the scheme and outline. Harris is sending some of his boards to raid cars through a half an hour before you reach Munich. That should draw the fighters away from you. Well, that's a good move, sir, but uh, German radar will tell a different story. Yes, I'm coming to that. Now, when you take off, you will lead number five group in the direction of Switzerland. That's just a friend, of course, but it will confuse the issue somewhat. Now, just at the border... Six Lancasters will break off and swerve south towards Milan. As they go, they'll be dropping bundles of metal foil. That'll show up on their radar screens and look like a formation of aircraft. We hope it'll make the Germans think you're all going south to Italy. Why, I don't think we can do much better than that, sir. Huh? I think we can do a little better. The Pathfinders are in this, too. They'll go in a few minutes before the group... They'll drop markers from medium level. Then you and your boys come in with the mosquitoes. You'll come in as near to deck level as you can and, and drop your own markers. Then the rest of 617 will come in at medium level and drop more markers. After that, 200 bombers of number 5 group will plaster the place. Well, Tesha, what do you think of it? Sir, it's the tightest piece of planning I've seen for a long time. I, I don't see that it can miss. Well, there is one point, though, sir. Uh, what's that? Distance, sir. Munich's a long way away. It's right on the safety limit. Unless we're carrying overload tanks... And you, you see, I've asked for them, but they haven't come in yet. And we're not going to have any margin for bad winds or upset timing unless we get them. We'll get on to group and keep chasing them. Don't let up till you get them. I'm afraid I won't much help to you. I'll be tied up with the Commander-in-Chief for the next few days. Hello? Hello? Hello, I can't hear you. Hello? 
Yes, that's right. Yes, this is Cheshire, 617. Look here, our overload tanks haven't arrived yet. I, I beg your pardon? What's that? Look here, everybody's got priorities these days. Well, we've got a big do coming off in a week. We've got to have them. Look here, I've got an order signed by the Air Vice Marshal. Look here, you, you, you ought to know 617 doesn't run picnic parties. No. Of course I can't tell you what it's all about, but we've got to have the tanks. We've simply got to. What's that? Oh, blast it. All right, yes. Yes, I'll bring you back tomorrow. No go, huh, Skipper? No go. Please ring tomorrow. Yeah. Honestly, Mac, every Tupney Hepney outfit seems to be able to get a priority, but not 617. Oh, no. Not 617. Uh, same old story. Can't Cochran do anything? Oh, I don't know. I uh, simply can't reach him, Mac. He's tied up in London. He's likely to be for a few days. Uh. I've simply got to handle this on my own. And what happens if we can't get him? You really want to know? All right. Come over here. Where? Wait till I roll down this map. There. Now, just take a look at this. Right. If we can't get them, this is the only possible solution. And it isn't really a solution at all. We fly down here from Woodall to Manston. Manston here, see? Right. All right, that cuts 100 miles off our distance. At Manston, we fill up again. Then, instead of taking Cochrane's route to Munich, we cut straight across here. You see, right across here in a direct line. Oh, but hell, Skipper, you can't do that. Look where it takes you. You have to cross the heaviest flak areas in Europe. You don't miss a single one. I know that, Mac. But if we don't get the tanks, that's the only way to do it. You know what you're saying, don't you, Skipper? If everything goes to time, and it never does, if all the winds are in our favor, and they never are, we might just possibly get back. But we probably won't. It's a suicide flight. If, if. All right, Mac. Don't lean on it too hard. After all, I'm going down to group myself tomorrow morning. Anyway, between you and me, if I can't talk sense into somebody there, I really don't know what we'll do. It's no good talking, Cheshire. You might just as well have saved yourself the trip. I told you I'd do the best I could, but, well, I can't just pull tanks out of a hat. I see, sir. You do realise what we're being asked to do, don't you, sir? I do. Even if we fly down to Manston and refuel, we'll have to take the direct route to Munich. And that leads us over the worst flak on the continent. I know. Well, even if we do that, sir, even if we have the best conditions, our tanks will be dry by the time we hit the British coast. Cheshire, I'm afraid you will have to do it that way. Oh, we will. Now, look here, sir. Would you ask one of your own boys to do it? Would you plan an operation... A major operation on those terms? After all, sir, I've done a lot of operations. I've never been asked to do one on those terms. What's more, I... don't really know anyone who has. Well, if you can't do the marking in mosquitoes, you'll just have to do it in a Lancaster. That's an even messier form of suicide. Mind what you're saying, Cheshire. Don't be a blasted fool, man. Eh? You're asking me to condemn six mosquito crews to certain death because you... Oh, all right, or somebody under you is too damned lazy to get off his bottom to get us the tanks. Now, look here, Cheshire, this is an order. Whatever happens, this operation must go on. And more than that, I'm warning you now, I'm sending a memorandum of this conversation to Air Chief Marshal Harris. Send the conversation to the Prime Minister if you want to. It doesn't alter the facts. That is enough, Cheshire. Now, dismiss. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, chaps, but... Well, those are the facts. Mm, very unpleasant facts. Yes, I know that, but... Well, I'm under orders, there's nothing more I can do about it. Look at these Met reports, Skipper. Heavy cloud. Possibly ice cloud over the whole of western Germany. All right, but, but what about Munich? What about Munich? Possibly clear. Just possibly. Oh, I see. And the winds might be favourable, just might, at 14,000 feet. 14,000! We've got a mark from the deck, Skipper, and there's 400 guns to get to. All right, all right. Yes, well, how much petrol is that going to eat up? If everything goes perfectly, we might just possibly get back to Manston. Ah, hell, Skipper, we don't mind sticking our necks out in a reasonably planned job, but this is such a damned unnecessary risk. It's sheer murder. You can say that again. Uh, well, what do you say, Skipper? Well, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, chaps, but... We've got to go. Hmm. Well, the skipper's coming, too. Okay, Skipper. I suppose uh, better come with you. Port, they'll be refueled in 20 minutes, Skipper. Well, that gives us time for a cigarette, Dad. Yeah, sure, yeah, have one of mine. Thanks. Now, stop looking like one of those cumulus clouds I hope we won't be running into. You know, I, I am sorry about this. No, it's not your fault, Skipper. The boys know that, too. But you can't blame them for being browned off. They, they don't expect to get back, you know. I know. Well, why couldn't Cochrane do something about it? Davy, don't blame Cochrane. I know he carries senior rank and all the rest, but his hands are as much tied at policy level as ours are on operation. You never said a truer word. They're sending us out with our hands tied. Ah, oh, rot the lot. Here goes a light. Oh, sure. Hey, Skipper. Skipper. Oh, uh, what is it, mate? Cochran's on the line. He wants to talk to you. Right. Uh, I, I'll be back in a minute, Chaps. Boy, he looks upset. Oh, so what? We're all upset. I'll lay off him, baby, can't you? After all, he's leading. He's got as little chance as the rest of us. What a chance that is. What a chance. I'm deeply sorry about the tanks, Cheshire. Do you think you can make it? Well, I... I don't really know, sir. Well, we'll do the best we can. How do the boys feel? Well, if you really want to know, sir, they feel pretty badly. Mind you, I, I don't blame them. They know they've been let down. I'd like you to tell them that... I've had a word with the commander-in-chief. Uh, when they get back, he's giving the whole squadron a week's leave. A week's leave. Isn't that generous? Isn't that just too generous for words? Ah, oh, can it, Davy? What's the time, Skip? Uh, it's time to go. Come on, chaps, let's get it over. You know, that's a beautiful sunset. Damn the sunset! I want to see the sun rise. On the way to Munich, Cheshire's apprehension steadily increased and his feelings weren't eased by the huge drifting ocean of cloud that rolled across the Rhine, blotting the earth from the aircraft and the aircraft from each other. Cheshire wondered how the other mosquito pilots were feeling about it, so he broke radio silence to call up Dave Shannon.
Where are they now? Cookie. They're about here, Bert. Ten minutes off target. What's the matter with you tonight, Cookie? Uh, look, Bert, I'm a cooperative sort of bloke. I've always believed that the good of the service comes before the good of individuals or individual units. Those boys of mine went out tonight without overload tanks. If anything happens to them, I'm going to raise an almighty row that they'll hear in Whitehall. Why didn't you get on the mere, Bertie? It's my job, not yours. For once, I couldn't cut through the red tape. Never again, though. Uh, take it easy, Cocky. Coffee, sir. There are a few tall poppies that need trimming. And this will give me the excuse I want to do it. That doesn't help my boys much. A uh, report from signal room, sir. Cheshire broke radio silence a few minutes ago. Weather's clearing. They've got a tower wind. Thanks. Well, that's a good break anyway, Bert. At least it gives them a fighting chance of getting home again. What's it? Uh, Message from 